recording. Okay, we're now recording. Uh, so this is a review of homework number 15 on linear regression correlation coefficient worksheet. So um, number one, recall that the least squares line minimizes the squares of the residuals. So remember what a residual is. A residual is your observed value minus your predicted value. Or sometimes you say it's a y minus y hat. So for example, the predicted value is going to be from the line. So I'll get two, for example. Um, to calculate that residual at x equals two, or maybe we do a table that might be easier. and then the residual. So x equals two, the y value of course is six. That's what we observe. The predicted value is four. So my residual is two, that's all. Um, and then if you square the residual, residual squared, of course that would be four. Um, and you could do this for all the other points, like at x equals one, x equals three, x equals four, and x equals five. And it's real easy. Um, observed at x equals one is four. Uh, predicted, eh, probably three, we'll say. Um, so the residual is one, square the residual is one. At x equals uh, three, we observe two. On the line is probably about five, we'll say. So residual is negative three, we square that's nine. At four, uh, we say that observed probably at four and um, predict is probably six. Four minus six, negative two, square that you get four. At five, looks like we observe uh, to be about nine. Predict is probably about seven. Nine minus seven is two, two squares is four. So that's what really what you're doing. Um, and then, um, I'm not sure what they mean by sketch and shade the squares of the residuals, but I think really all I just wanted you to do is just know how to be able to compute it. Uh, you could do a residual plot, of course. A residual plot is really simple. Here's your X, and here are your residuals. Um, so, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So at X equals one, your residual is one. Uh, let me do a tick marks. So if we do our residual plot, at x equals one, uh, our residual is one, at x equals two, our residual is two, at x equals three, our residual is negative three. So let's go, we're getting a bit of randomness here. At x equals four, it's negative two, at x equals five, it's positive two. So that's your residual plot. So that's number one. Uh, number two, I'm not going to actually do this because I think you guys have a practice of this. Um, you're going to make this your X and make this your Y. So you're going to you know, plug this into a Google spreadsheet. Um, and then you're going to get the equation of least squares regression line, which you guys should know how to do. Um, and of course, you'll get an equation using the predictor answer. And then was a residual. So you have to have an equation, obviously, for that. And you're going to do the same thing for number three. And uh, four and five are a little different. Um, Actually, yeah, let's just do it really quickly. It won't take too long. Okay, so let me um, pull up a Google spreadsheet right now. Create and share. And um, if you look at numbers, they have 50 through 100 in order. So X, Y, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And your Y values, of course, are 29.6, 33.4, 38.1, 42.5, 42.5, um, <clears throat> 45.3, 45.3. And of course, 52. 
And to get the equation of best fit, remember we go insert, uh, chart. Let's take a sweet little time, okay. <laughs> um, and if I go to um, customize, series, um, trend line, Oh, let me change my chart. My chart should be actually, um, a scatter. I don't know why I didn't do that. Give me one sec here. Yeah, it should be a scatter plot. There we go. Now customize series trend line, um, <clears throat> which is pretty good. Show R squared, use equation. So there we go. So you have your equation. So your slope is 0.435 and your y-intercept, of course, is um, 7.56, it looks like. Yeah, 7.56. And it looks like this is looking at a percentage of um, females in the US labor workforce. So in 1950, uh, this is a year since 1900, there are not too many females working. Uh, by the time we get to the year 2000, 52%. Okay, so that's good. Um, so anyway, um, the y intercept would represent um, the percentage of women in a labor force in the year 1900. So that's something I could ask on our test um, on Thursday of next week, not this Thursday, the following Thursday. So in labor force, sorry, that's missing handwriting, 1900. 0.435, what this means is that um, each year, percent of women in US labor force increases by 0.435. So it's a slope, remember, it's change Y or change in X. What's Y percentage, what's X years? So for every year, it's like a ratio of 0.435 or one. So for one year, the percent of women in US labor force increased by 0.435 on average for a hundred year period. Use the predicament kind of women would be working in 2010. Where equation is this, right? And you simply plug in 110. You just work that out, right? Not that hard. Use the calculator. 0.435 times 110 plus 7.56. So it looks like it'll be, uh, it'll be up to 55.41% in year 2010. And it was a residual. Remember, residual is y minus y hat. Uh, so the observed value is 38.1. Duh, we see it right there. The predicted value, if I plug in 70 into my equation, 0.435 times 70 plus 7.56, 0.435 times 70 plus 7.56, that'd be 38.01. So residuals 0.09. So all pretty straightforward stuff. So that's number two. Um, number three kind of works the same way. So I don't, I think I could just um, gloss over that. Um, but I think you should be able to be fine for number three. Uh, for number four, uh, for each research find, decide whether there's evidence of causation, correlation, or both. If it's only correlation, make name a possible lurking variable, it may be a cause of the results, okay? So as the sales of television sets has increased, so has the number of overweight adults. Um, yeah, I'd probably say it's a more of a correlation. Um, I would say does television cause weight gain necessarily? You could say correlation and maybe lurking variables like poor diet or lack of exercise. Um, 
I mean, there are people on TVs who do stay fit, right? So, but, um, you know, yeah, I, I suppose if you do have a TV, um, maybe you're just going to be inclined to kind of be a couch potato, but I, I would say that's probably correlation, not causation. A, sandwich school student, uh, a study in elementary school found that children with larger shoe sizes were better readers. Again, I wouldn't say that either. I'd probably say um, uh, we probably have a correlation again. And lurking variable could be like older kids. Um, might have bigger feet. And if they're older, they probably have just uh, have had more experience reading, perhaps. Uh, the more five fires sent to a fire, the longer it takes to put out the fire. Um, that one, maybe you could say it's a causation, perhaps. Um, because um, obviously um, the, the uh, a, a really crazy fire is going to cause more firefighters to come out to put it out. Um, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily uh, causing fire to burn longer, though. That's kind of weird. Um, so we kind of went over those. And then for multiple choice problem, what does it mean to have a, that, that has a strong net course? It means that if one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. Uh, like, for example, you could say, um, the hours you play video games per week in your GPA. You know, maybe someone plays a lot of video games with a low GPA. Um, but it's not a causation, so you gotta be careful. So I wouldn't say C. Um, there is a relationship, so I wouldn't say A. The slope is negative, totally I'd say that, and it would be a linear model. It just means that the data would kind of look like this, or if you did a best fit line, it would look like that. One with this is always a negative value, that makes no sense, so that's B. And then here's gotta match up. Um, I probably would say this is probably 0.99. That seems pretty tight. I'd say this is probably 0.90. Um, I would say this is kind of random here. I'd say this is probably a zero. Um, I probably say this is probably negative 0.5. It looks kind of tight there. Uh, I probably say it's about 0.50. It's kind of increasing a little bit. Um, and I probably, would say this is probably going negative a little bit, negative 0.4. So that's how I would probably um, assign all those for number six. Um, for instance, seven, sketch graph, graph has a correlation of exactly one. Well, it's just going to be like that. Um, but the slope of line, the best fit is greater than one. Um, Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, that totally could happen. I mean, you could have something like that. Then your line best fit. But remember, the coefficient is not the slope, right? You just be mindful about that. Um, and finally, for number eight, use graph calculator or use Excel or Google spreadsheets. Find the coefficient coefficient for the data in problem two and number three. So uh, we already kind of did that um, for number two. Uh, our R score is 0 0.991. So if you took the square root of 0 0.991, so you could say B equals squirt 0.991, and you get 0.995. So, um, so that's that one there. Um, hopefully that makes sense. OK. Uh, let's keep moving here. Um, clear my drawings. So that covers the homework review. So let me stop that recording.